That's the fuses. That's the fuse block. Well, hey, y'all. Welcome back to Doug's Cars. It's another beautiful sunny day here i'm still visiting some friends and family up in richmond virginia and uh i've gotten to drive a couple of cool cars and they've been mercedes and all but today driving a bmw 2002 it's a 1972 uh, it's not a special model or anything it's in shamani or shamanics white which of course is named after the the ski resort town it has uh e30 bottle caps which just really make the car look well really good and um you know obviously the owner is very much an enthusiast of these round taillight cars. And they did eventually switch to, in like 1974 to these square taillights and big, big bumpers, mainly for the US market, of course. But what a what a good looking car. This kind of invented the whole sports sedan as a thing, although it's obviously a coupe. They didn't do four doors until the E30, but uh, just a neat car. These had about just around 100 horsepower. A two liter engine that was developed mainly for the US market because the US importer wanted a more powerful version of the 1602, which was the vehicle that preceded us. I actually came here in a in a modern BMW. So that, I mean, they still have the DNA from this in, the, in modern cars, uh, or at least they try to. And, you know, they learn so much from these. these. These are such good driving cars. Well, I have never ridden in or driven one of these before. So is it gonna be a case of never meet your heroes? I don't know, we'll find out. We're gonna find out in a little bit. But first, let's take a tour of the car and uh, then we'll take it for a nice drive because that's what these are all about. The ultimate driving machine, this is, this was it. Yeah, there you go. There's the cute little two liter. Man, look at how small that radiator is. That's awesome. Little uh, carburetor here. Of course, BMWs for a long time had the the front tilting hoods, um, long time, and this just rotates and and holds the hood down. Um, of course, we gotta walk around this way, and you miss out. But yeah, you see, Shimani. There's. <laughs> I had a 318i E30, which was really a spiritual successor. This car it was coupe, just like this one. Little tiny engine, fuel injected, of course, but related to this distantly. Heck, it was only four, 12 years newer than this one. This is a 72. And I think I mentioned earlier, this is a basically one family owned car. Guy's dad bought it, it was two years old, and he now has it. And as you can see, it's been immaculately maintained. But uh, that's cool, the little, little sprayers there for your washer fluid. Just a really clean, good looking, well maintained car. And in the trunk, nice little uh, like clamshell trunk lid here. Big trunk. It's not very deep, of course, because the car is only a couple feet off the ground. But rear-mounted battery. I mean, these things had excellent weight, weight distribution. They really, really brought about the modern sports sedan. So, yeah, fuel filler there. You can see, you know, it's it's not completely carpeted. It's just the way things were back then. But it's got the round taillights. And it is the preeminent early super, like sedan i mean like people were driving 4500 pound chevy caprices and then you would fly past them in this with only 100 horsepower and you could take them on every corner on a mountain road just a cool car you can see frameless windows but when you get in you've got to make sure not to take your eyeball out on that this is cool i noticed crank this to get the vent window to open and these things are amazing of course because they just direct air right on you and this is uh, this does not have the AC center console as they call it. Um, so it's not an AC car, uh, although a lot of them were obviously for the U.S. market. And this seat, of course, is is not factory. It's an aftermarket seat. This is what they would look like. You can see vinyl and a little velour. <laughs> the back seat is original, all vinyl. And you can see there's some aftermarket speakers. And these rear windows, of course, pop out for even more air and to let your back seat passengers have some. All right, I'm gonna this. It's hard for me to slide in here no tilt wheel on the steering wheel is giant this is a not power steering car so it actually is very very difficult at low speeds to turn the wheel considering how light it is you can see you get a full complement of gauges here vdo gauges gas you know uh you got your lighter wipers headlights looks like a fan and then you've got you know your your air 
here, some aftermarket gauges and an aftermarket radio, of course, shift pattern there, and of course there, and it is a proper, I always like a car with the reverse gear next to first. Got sizal mats, like were very common back then, and you know, it's just a tidy little place to be. It's got a nice little shelf here. The owner keeps his hats. You've got a crank sunroof, and uh, there's not a ton of headroom in this car. I think it's mainly because of the sports seat. But uh, I, I mean, I feel like I'm right up against the roof. But again, the greenhouse in this is so open and airy. This is back before there were like rollover protection pillars. So you don't feel uh, like you're cramped. It is a little tiny two-door coupe. So, you know, you could put kids back there. Oop, looks like the seat bottom is missing. I wonder where that is. Good thing I didn't try to get in there. But it's a neat place to be. And it definitely reminds me of my E30 318i which really wasn't a whole lot bigger, although it was two generations newer and it was an 84. Uh, had about the same horsepower, about 101. This has, I think, 99 or 100, depending on whether you use Ferrostelke or horsepower. So, yeah, I mean, there's not a whole lot in here to see. Uh, handbrake, um, someone's added some foam cup holders here. <laughs> I wouldn't want to take those around a corner. And it's just a pleasant place to be. I mean, there's, there's nothing special about it. The driving is what makes this car special. So I'm gonna get y'all mounted up here on the windshield. We're gonna go for a drive. It's my first time driving one of these. I hope it's good. I can't imagine it isn't. Right. Seat belt. It's uh now the car is still cold, so nice straight, you know, four-cylinder raspy exhaust. Uh Heavy steering from a stop. I'm not driven a stick shift in a in a minute. Only a three or a four speed, sorry, not, not a five speed, but they they would get to that at some point. It you know the steering is great at speed. I'm doing this, and of course the car is instantly responding. I'm not gonna say go-kart like, it's not quite there, but it, it drives pretty nicely. Um see how the brakes feel here. The, the pedals are floor hinged, which if you've never driven a floor hinged pedal, it's like a, an original air-cooled Porsche 911. Um, they don't come down from the dash, but rather up from the floor. And uh, that's just, it just feels a little different. There's nothing wrong with it, it's just the way they are. I uh, hope the car is warming up a little bit. You know, carburetors, it's just the way carburetors can be. They can be a little finicky, although it's a beautiful day. It's like 75 degrees and sunny out. So there's there's no reason for um, for this to, to run any any weird or anything. I just it's just you know user error at this point. I honestly haven't driven a stick shift in months, but it's like riding a bike. You know it's it's going to come back, and uh, I've never driven this stick shift before either. Of course. Interesting turn signal lever. Yeah, it's idling okay now. Um, just have to wait for this traffic to go by, unfortunately, and then I got this little stretch here that I can get it up to speed. Shift is nice. It's not notchy, really. It's not. It's not um, hard to do. It's. It's very pleasant, actually. Okay, fourth gear, 55, 60 miles an hour. Uh, this is. This is cool. I get it. I think I'd like to try one of the Kugelfischer mechanical fuel injected 2002 TIIs. About 30 more horsepower than this, and they're very rare finicky cars uh i don't know if any of you have ever heard of the hack mechanic he writes for uh, the bmw cca and uh his name's rob siegel he lives up in massachusetts and he has a lot of these and i've always followed him and in fact i still am a member of the bmw cca although i don't currently own a bmw and i've owned like more than 10 mainly because i enjoy reading his columns really neat guy and he is a hack mechanic i mean he goes to the hardware store to buy parts to fix his cars they are not uh, something you find in a Concours, but they look good and they drive well, and that's the four. These are driver's cars. They're starting to come up in value a lot, though. I mean, the opportunity for me to get one of these would have been 10 years ago, but now, you know, I mean, they've all become collector's items, and they were just daily drivers, just like so many cars were back then. Yeah, this is fun. This. This takes me back to my E30, but of course, that was a much more luxurious car. 
know if by the mid 80s BMW was was known for driving but also was becoming more of a luxury mark even down to the in the 3 series and that was the lowest of the low a 318i coupe uh, it had power windows um, it didn't seem to have power locks at least from what I was told it didn't have it they certainly didn't work if it did and of course it had you know air conditioning and, and that kind of power antenna I mean it was the 80s um, so it was, it was certainly more luxurious than this this is all you need. I mean, it does have a radio. I'm not going to turn it on because there's no reason to. I can hear that neat little four-cylinder Rorty exhaust out the back. And, you know, it, you see the hood right in front of you is like four feet long. That's cute. I would like to try this with a regular seat. Now, I'm sitting way up higher than normal, and I'm much taller than the owner. Um, but thankfully, you know, uh, was given permission to let me drive this. So I, I, I feel... A little cramped against the roof, which you can probably tell from the camera angle. I'm like right up against the roof line with, uh, with my trademark ball cap on. But uh, again, because it's so airy in here, even you know now that I'm in it for a few minutes and driving it, I don't feel claustrophobic, and I do suffer from that. So um, having the windows open probably helps. Of course, I have to. Uh, the air conditioning console cars. I know about this from from Rob Siegel. Uh, those consoles are pretty rare. An incredibly brittle plastic uh, like really 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 hard to come by and also very um, very brittle and they break easily Ooh, heavy steering heavy steering uh, it's been a while since I've driven a non-power steering car too but uh I mean oh man, it just the steering is so direct and nice it shifts so well and like I said you know I've driven hundreds of thousands of miles in stick shift cars I just haven't in a few months and I, this is I'm just right at it. It's just, it's so easy to drive. Uh, I drove a Mercedes Pagoda 280 SL just a few days ago. Uh, same era. I mean, it was a 68, this is a 72. And that was a six cylinder and a little bit more, you know, of a, of a luxury vehicle than this. Higher class car. I mean, it was the Mercedes convertible. Uh, Hollywood stars bought, right? But that also felt pretty pretty modern. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say because of the non-power steering, this doesn't feel quite as modern because, I mean, what car today doesn't have at least power-assisted steering? And, you know, this is the opposite of the 1970s Chevy Caprice I mentioned earlier where, you know, you're, you're pinky and you're, you're spinning the wheel lock to lock. No feeling whatsoever. I can feel the road in this. That was the point of this. Even with these, you know, giant sidewall 14-inch tires on these uh, really good-looking bottle caps. I had the bottle caps on my E30 318. Well, I mean, pretty much all the U.S. market ones did. So, uh, you know, that takes me back. But they're a nice upgrade for this car. It's a four-lug wheel, so there's not a whole lot of options. The problem is getting tires for these is getting difficult because 14-inch tires are either stupid, stupidly expensive at companies that remake old tires or NLA. I mean, no modern car has 14-inch tires, at least not in the U.S. Maybe some little super mini in Europe, but they're just getting hard to come by, and that's unfortunate. So he may have to upgrade these tires. I believe the 2002 TII or turbos had five lug wheels, which opens it up to even more of an option of, of wheel uh, and tire combo. But um, this is just a regular 2002, the 99 horsepower one. And you know, honestly, I said earlier I'd like to drive one of those, which is true. I want, I'd like to see what they're like. The Kugelfischer injection is interesting to me because it's mechanical, um, but this is probably all you need. I mean, a fifth gear or an overdrive might be nice if you're cruising all day long on the interstate. But around town, this would be fun. Crank that sunroof open and just ha and just drive. I mean, really. Open it up here a little bit. Everything's warmed up nicely. Four thousand into third. Into fourth. It sounds good, doesn't it? I mean, it really does. Like brakes, good. Doesn't pull. No, it's just it's just a good solid car, <laughs> and it's just a cute little thing, isn't it? I mean, I think the um, the M2 is the spiritual successor of this car, and you know that it's an M car, so of course it's way more powerful than they could have dreamed of when they were making these. But you know, it's it's small and relatively lightweight for the the era that we live in now, and you know, you're not going to get a car like this anymore. I mean, we have too many regulations for you know, safety and emissions and all that, you know, and that's another debate as to how cool that stuff is or not. But um, we have those things. And, you know, 
people don't want to die in a car wreck and on fire and i get that and, you know and i don't want to be in an accident in something like this even with this three-point seat belt that i have um, for one thing the steering wheel is so big i can I, I wouldn't be able to get my legs out from underneath it if it moved um but it was less of a concern back then and cars have become much heavier and so they have needed to get a lot more powerful but this is just basic fun motoring and it invented an entire class of vehicle that you know we still have to this day and so many other car manufacturers have attempted to emulate and successful or not um, but this one absolutely successful and it, 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 it it's just it's making me grin uh, you know a lot of people say don't drive your heroes and I've never even ridden in one of these I've never even sat in one of these uh, I really enjoyed my little 10 minute drive here so I hope you all enjoyed it as well, and this nice little introduction to uh, Shimoni White, it's 1972, BMW 2002, um, yeah, hit subscribe so you can see more content. Hey, if enough of you do that, maybe I can buy one of these one day. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, y'all. Have a great day.